It's from South Lanarkshire. I set up your radio station there. Uh, did you hear that the TS Queen Mary is going to have engines fitted so she can sail again? Gordon, I, this is so funny. You and I must be septic. I found out on Saturday, by, or was it Sunday? Was it yesterday? Watching a YouTube. And Princess Anne had visited the Queen Mary, called after her grandmother, of course. And uh, no, her great grandmother. What am I talking about? Her great grandmother, the Queen Mary. Because <coughs> you'll know this, uh, Gordon. Uh, but the Queen Mary was just the Queen Mary when she was launched in 1933 from Denny's, William Denny and Brothers Dumbarton. And um, then they asked her, John Brown's asked, uh, I think it would be Williamson Buchanan in those days, pre um, Caledonian steam packet. And they asked the owners if they would mind calling her Queen Mary II because with Lloyd's registry, you can't have more than one vessel of exactly the same name. And they agreed to call her Queen Mary II so that the huge Cunarda yard number, was it 534, could be called Queen Mary. Otherwise, the Cunarda would have had to have been called Queen Mary II. And Williamson Buchanan agreed, and um, there was a lovely picture of Her Late Majesty Queen Mary in the saloon on the Queen Mary when I was wee. I also remember beautiful big sofas. <coughs> she was a lovely, lovely thing, God, and I don't know if you were on her much. I was very privileged. I was taken up to the bridge, and I got to steer her. And then I was taken down the engine room as well. Tremendous. And I was coming across from Danoon one night. I was quite young. And I was down the engine room watching them manoeuvring and hadn't realized how quickly we'd arrived at Guruk and left. And there were no phones on boats in these days. There would have been a VHF radio. But I got carried up to Glasgow. And my parents were expecting me at Guruk at 6 o'clock and I had to telephone them from Bridge Wharf at quarter past eight, I think it was, when she arrived at Bridge Wharf because she would cant, she would swing round and come up river astern, being steered from the bow emergency position uh, with the skipper on the bridge giving hand signals to the steersman. There we are, dinky do. Very sad to see the passing of Mary Lee. She was a huge star and a very nice lady. Absolutely, Gordon. And, of course, uh, Mary and Jack were big Scotty McClue fans. Kirsty Allen, what have you done? Kirsty Allen has sent me five pounds on YouTube. Kirsty, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for that. Kirsty must have tapped the dollar bill, bottom left, and she sent me five pounds. And guys, that will go in the pot for the new microphone. I love it. This is so kind of you. Thank you, Kirsty. Uh, I've been on TS Queen Mary a couple of times during her renovations. Well, Gordon, I remember the engines very, very well. There was three of them. <clears throat> and uh, there was a reversing turbine and two mainstream ahead turbines. And what happened when the telegraphs rang, the uh, engineers, the, they called them greasers, uh, you know, assistant engineers, but they called them greasers. And the chief engineer would be on duty. The second engineer would answer the telegraph. And the greasers stood up on a platform with these uh, wheels. <coughs> Horizontal wheels. And, of course, what they actually were were huge valves for the steam. So when the telegraph rang for slow ahead, you'd see the chief engineer have a look out of the porthole at the side just to see where she was, and then they would, uh, they would adjust the steam. <coughs> and they watched the steam gauges, the T's and P's, temperatures and pressures. You're welcome, Kirsty. It's so kind of you. Thank you. Very much appreciated, particularly in this day and age when money's tight for everyone. Scotty, what happened to your radio job? Possibility that 
is in the works. Also, do you think your show gets held back by the same people calling each week rather than new callers? Or is it good? No, F document. Uh, for years and years and years, I have had a core of callers to a phone in. And it never, ever, ever holds you back because it's much better to speak to someone live calling than it is to not hear anybody. For instance, tonight, if you wanted to call in, you can do. I shall set up the phones for you again. We'd, uh, we'd reduce them, but I can set them up for you again, and you can come on and give us a call. Scotty, there was also HMS Queen Mary that was sunk at Jutland. Was that Anthony White? I remember HMS Iron Duke was Jellicoe's flagship and Admiral Beatty, and the Queen's father, King George the uh, Sixth, as Duke of York, was uh, a young officer on board the Queen Elizabeth, I think. Are you sure it wasn't the Queen Elizabeth Admiral Beatty's flagship? My dad was a boiler technician in the American Navy. Fantastic, Anthony. Wonderful stuff. And, you know, the thing about the Queen Mary the Second. She was almost silent, and she was so stable. Even in a, a wild sea, she just rolled very gently, a beautiful thing. And all you had, the loudest you heard on the deck was this, and that was the tiny, tiny whine from the turbines. We had obviously a diesel, chatters, boom, 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 you know, and it's loud. And, and noisy, but this was a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And if they're going to get, because I'd said, Gordon, on social media comments, you know, surely they must have the original drawings for the turbines. A turbine blade is about that size. From my nose to my bonnet, that's the size of a turbine blade. But the casings will be about, or at least a foot thick. For high pressure steam. There we are, dinky do. I say to every single one of you, give us a call if you want to, folks. Um, hi from, uh, oh, yes, indeed. You know, we've spoken about Stanley Baxter many times. I'd love it if I could have him on. Will Smith will be suspended by the Academy, says Dr. Jitters. Do you think so? Uh, I think it will affect not just him, but his whole family. He gives a shout out to Jay. It's his birthday, I can, Aaron. Uh, there, no work for son or daughter. Ricky Gervais had no qualms. Yes, indeed, but I never found Ricky Gervais offensive. Evening, Scotty. From the lovely Columba Hotel in Oban. Zach, I know the Columba Hotel very well. Just along from the South Pier. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And uh, so there we have it. Can I get a shout out? It's my birthday, yes. Don Rickles, yes, Don Rickles, Shane. That was your man. As somebody said about the Colombo Whitlessy back. <laughs> Pardon me. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, there we are. There we go, here. You're a legend. You have a new hairstyle nowadays. Yes, I do. There we are. I'm just looking back. Um. Yeah, I can't see there. There's Disco Pete sending me beautiful GGs. Disco Pete, a mini speaker. Disco Pete's one of these very, very generous people that when he comes live on the TikTok, he always sends me a gift. Disco Pete, you're so kind. Thank you for following. Has everybody watching on TikTok actually followed? Ask yourselves that. Um, I'm not sure if TS Queen Mary will be stored with one or two funnels. I saw there was a lot of discussion about that. Am I right in thinking that her present funnels are, because uh, I saw her from the Clydeside Expressway, are not the original dimensions, they're thinner. Is that right? Hmm. See, Gordon, you'll be ahead of me here, but there was a huge number of these turbine steamers turned out by Denny's. The Turbinia, which was Charles Parsons' experimental turbine yacht, Turbinia, uh, appeared in 1896. And in 1901, Denny's had built the first commercial turbine steamer 
which was the king